What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome back into the Nick Club Wrestling Happy Hour. I am your host, or your co-host, your virtual bartender, Mr. Nick Teodoro. Joining me, as always, is my lovely tag team partner in life, my wife, Miss Nicole. Nicole, cheers. What are you cheers drinking? Cheers, as what per you... usual, my Tito's orange juice and cranberry juice. What about you, Mr. Nick? Mr. Nick's having some red wine to celebrate a nice, another great Friday, a long week. As usual, another great week in wrestling. We are on the road. We are in it. We are on the last exit towards WrestleMania. But before we get to that, we're not going to bury the lead. We're going to go right into it. We teased this whole week. If you are a follower, again, oh yeah, just to mention, I always forget. If you're new here, please hit the old Samoan spike on the like button and make sure you subscribe. We'd like to see it every week. Become a regular. So anyway, getting right to our big announcement. We have talked about this for a little while. We're going to have our first guest on the Nick Club Wrestling Happy Hour. Next, well, this Wednesday, excuse me, April 3rd at 6 p.m., so our normal happy hour time, in honor of WrestleMania week. WrestleMania is in Philadelphia. We have a former ECW heavyweight champion, a former ECW tag team champion, a WWFE hardcore champion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have on Wednesday's show... The hardcore icon, PJ Palaco, formerly known as Just Incredible, one of the last ECW heavyweight ECW champions, the alum. real ECW. Yeah, not the old one. But yeah, guys, we're so excited. We're going to have PJ on. We're going to ask him all the things about all the things. And it's just, we're so, I'm like super excited and super nervous. Like I've never, Nick does interviews and talks to people all the time. I'm like, <laughs> but we're going to have him on and it's going to be guys incredible. Ah, just incredible. Huh? Yeah. So for that show, we're going to ask you all to participate. As always, you can write in your questions. We are going to have the phone lines open for a short period of time to ask Justin, some, excuse me, PJ, some questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the key. You got to be a subscriber. That's the rule. Get on those socials, baby. Become a regular. Exactly. And if you can't make it for some reason live, you can always watch the show later and you can submit your questions in. We finally now have an email. You can reach us. official. It may be hard to read on there, but it is nickclubwhh at gmail.com. So submit your questions. And those will be every week as well for the regular shows. Mm -hmm. Could be topics, wrestlers, whatever you want to talk about. Tell us what you're thinking and what you're drinking. Exactly. The usual. So. But we're so excited to have PJ on next week, so you guys better tune in. Exactly. So now, now that we got that exciting news out of the I way. I Tony Khan making a big announcement. Well, we were. Making an announcement about We announcement. thought about that. <laughs> we were going to make. It was so exciting. Guys, I really wanted to make an announcement about this upcoming announcement. <laughs> next week's show. We're going to talk about when we're going to make this announcement. It's going to be epic. You're going to love it all. But, really excited. Yeah, so we're being Tony Khan's and making an announcement. PJ is going to be on next week. Tune in. Now let's get it. All right. Well, yeah, the regulars are getting rowdy already. They're pretty pumped. Lisa's writing in. Woop, woop. That's so awesome. Dare I say it. it's incredible. Thank you, Lisa. Ed's also in the chat, and he said she said the thing. I did the thing! I said the thing! It's, it's so exciting, guys. You know. It's pretty exciting. So, let's get into it. So, stemming off of, from last Friday's SmackDown, we had the Rock and Roman face-to-face showdown, which was, I guess, highly anticipated. It's anticipated, because we've seen so many other people get involved in this, so at least that they're alone. So they had their face-to-face I'll let Nikki go into more greater oh, details about how I'm, Roman kind of ran I, down Cody, but well, oh, Ro- we want to do Roman. Go. Well, well, Ro- well. I was no, just gonna no, no, say no. I was gonna kind of gloss over. I Ro- have three okay. sticky notes on my laptop. It's SmackDown, Raw, and AEW, so I have to make sure I'm, I got the right sticky note. But for SmackDown, obviously Roman comes out like 400 years later, and he's like, "Acknowledge me," and then he sort of like runs down, and then, like Cody comes out, but it was like. Weird. 
that room was like, you're an idiot, you're a moron, like, you're so dumb, like, we should have fixed yourself, you're stupid, you'll never be a champion, like, it's my little brother's death, but I know that, uh, you know, you can trust him, blah, blah, blah. And Cody was basically was like, well, you know, took the belt off the shield, which Cody eventually did. And he turned it back and he was like, oh, do you trust the rock? Like, I'll put that back to you. Or he's like, I'll raise you one. You know, it's like, could you trust the rock? And then he was like, oh, well, Cody, you're such a politician. Turn all the things around. And then they basically, because it was kind of mirrored what happened last year. Like, they go to, like, handshake. And then, like, Romans, like, mugged him and then, like, turned and, like, shook hands with Paul. And then he was like, oh, you're stupid. And then, like, he goes, you know, on the outside the ring and his music hits. And then you see Solo and Jimmy come out from behind and, like, come meet him at the bottom of the ramp. Very, very cinematic in the sense of if you remember, like, if you're an old, like, like gangster, like, like, mafia type, uh, like movie or series fan, that's what it reminded me of. Like an old like Italian mob style, like hit movie, like uh, it was oh my god, Boardwalk Empire. It reminded me of scenes from Bo- actually Boardwalk Empire back however many years ago with Steve Buscemi. There was one scene where Al Capone comes out and and basically kind of saves him out of the woods. It's kind of an ambush. It reminded me so much of that scene uh, from that season. I can't remember what season it is, but um, again, very cinematic with but, with them coming yeah, out. But of the also, studio. kind of the the chef's kiss of it that Cody's not a dumb dumb because all of a sudden you see Jay and Seth come out and then stand in front of the ring in, to kind of like protect Cody and like Roman just like oh, I can't believe you do that and then there's just a big epic stare down. So, and then they go out there leading off the heels of of SmackDown into Raw and we open up and Cody comes right out. Cuts uh, his normal, I would say, classic Cody classic baby face much, promo. And I, I kind of feel like he was a little, like, uh, tipping or behind the curtain. Because he's like, oh, this is, like, the weird period before Mania. Like, do you beat people up? Do you don't beat people up? And he's like, oh, it's weird. And then he went in how he, like, paid. Someone asked to be in his, for Cody to be in their wedding. He paid for a bachelor party. And he paid for, like, little Yeah, he, he ran down Mania. how much of a good guy he yeah, was. And, and it he, really kind of annoyed me. Well, again, he's the you know, blah, blah, baby face. And he was like, you know, I act like the champ. I dress like the champ because the champ is never here. Right. And then he had it. Then he all like tells everyone like point at the WrestleMania sign. So his back is turned to the ramp and then the rock music hits and then the rock comes down. So this is kind of, I believe it's the first time it's just Cody Seth alone in the ring post the uh, Vegas conference thing. which which just pause right there i have to say and i have to give bleach report credit because the the writer for bleach report wrote this so i'm not gonna this call it, but it, it put the the seed in my head the rocks entrance it's newer it seems like mm-hmm. it's just so perfect it just his, his the way he comes out and i don't know if he plans it <laughs> i mean they probably do a run through but like it just looks so with all the electricity and everything and and i think they had a little issue with like the spotlight at one point but just the way it shines and everything it just Every time he comes out, you just know it's a mega star. The, like. the Brahma Bull's eyes are red now because he's a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, he comes out, and they're standing in the ring. And basically, the crowd's like, holy shit, holy shit. Just like, what? What's like, just. And they stood there. It felt like forever, just like staring at each other. And then what Nick has on screen, he just leans in and whispers. Sweet nothing. Sweet little baby nothings. He was so excited. And then. Then Cody started. got aroused. I think we all did. Well, that one woman did at the rock concert. He made note of it. Like, whatever, two, three Fridays ago, a woman (laughs) flashed him. And he's like, I love you too. (laughs) But, um, but yes, so he whispers in and he, he, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to fast. So they had the the whisper and then they leave. And then what happens is, let me scroll down my notes. So then Jay is going to have a match with Shinsuke Nakamura. And then before he go, Jay goes to the ring, Seth goes to him, like, me and Cody have your back. Don't worry about it. So he has the match with Shin. And, of course, the bloodline comes down to interrupt. And then Seth and Cody come down to even the odds. And then Drew McIntyre comes down and starts beating up Seth. So 
Seth and Drew are off. And then magically they're like, oh yeah, we're doing a match. So Jay and <laughs> Shin finish the match. And then basically uh, Cody's beating up Jimmy and they go like off the ramp or whatever. And then they cut to uh, Cody and Jimmy still fighting. And then here comes The Rock to inter to inter interfere, like interfere or whatever, um, to start beating him up and beats the crap, crap out of Cody. Him. So backtracking just a little bit. So The Rock goes and whispers something into Cody. Now, when I first saw this, I had to play it back a couple times, and I finally caught what he said. Because at first, I thought it's meant that you're not supposed to know what he's saying, but but I picked it up pretty easily after the second or third time of, of mm -hmm. watching it. So he leans in and he says, tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. So at first, I thought he was saying, I, I, I thought he was just going to be some sort of like a another layer to the whole double agent storyline of like, wink, wink, like something's going on, you know. Oh, no. Um, and everything because he also you know cody also in the promo does with the point does the bullet club kiss a little bit and saying he has friends so so i'm hoping maybe there's some sort of twist i think i'm hoping maybe I dustin would, shows I up think, i would love dustin to come out. i think he is I, I really would think that would be a great he's surprise but yeah because he's gonna be at wrestlemania this weekend and they want to capitalize on all the on all the uh social media yeah. because you know tony Khan loves the he attention. does the the he does it too sweet, kisses it, and then guns up. Mm. But he does it a lot. He did it when he won both Royal Rumbles. He, like, mm. that's, you I, know, because he says him, him and the Bucks are still biffles, and that's still, like, a part of him, but whatever. But, but, so yeah. he ends up just, yeah, like you said, beating the ever-loving. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, do you want to? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Ever loving hell out of, out of yeah, Cody, sorry. Yeah, like, and he, he hits him with the garbage cans, and then it and this is where it gets like put your tin foil hats on kids. So then we finally go out. He gets them outside and they, he like weirdly opens the door. And it's the back of Cody's bus, which is counting his vodka, whatever it's called. Something with the W. I don't remember. <laughs> and then he's like throwing him into the bus and doing this. And he's like, look at your boy. He said, look at him so many times. It's driving me insane. But then, like, and then I think it was it was great of him because he would, like, throw Cody. And, you know, Cody's, like, obviously gigging on himself or cutting himself. And he, like, grabbed the camera. He's like, look at me. Look at your boy. Mama Rhodes. <laughs> Mama Rhodes. I'm going to show you something, Mama Rhodes. And then he, like, <laughs> took, so off, like took off the belt that said, like, Mama Rhodes on it. He's like, your, his, your big boy's blood's going to be on this. And then they cut back to... Well, I guess it was before, but they cut to Cody and Cody's bleeding. And then I feel like this is, like, the such your PG era that like I feel like bleeding like them having him bleed and I think uh, Cody loves to and he cursed he, he cursed he was like he's like you don't you don't you, you don't, don't f with the boss you, you know don't like fuck with the final boss and it was just like so it just felt so attitude era so real and I think Cody is kind of that newer the the current generation guy that you can trust to bleed himself correctly or do the thing correctly and sell it correctly. Um, I think it, this means so much, again, like I love AEW and I love John Moxley, but it's like every 30 seconds you sneeze on John Moxley and he's bleeding. Like this felt so real because they do, they don't do it too much. Mm -hmm. So then like when Nick has, he smears the blood, he's like, mama robes, I'm going to give this to you and just continue to like, just beat him up. And then apparently I read today that like, even when they cut, like, okay, we're off air and like rock was just kind of like F you like, and still beat him up for another couple of minutes. <laughs> Yeah. So like Cody sold that, it, Rock sold it. I think it was it was great. So uh, it begs the question now mm -hmm. because a month ago we asked like I didn't want to see this. Rock a month ago versus Roman or Cody ago. versus Roman. Now it's changed and the story has now gone to and and Nikki begged this question to me earlier today. this morning. Are you? I'm, am I more interested in Rock versus Cody in a one-on-one -on -one match, or Cody, or, or, or Roman versus Cody? Uh, yeah. Honestly, I mean, you know, I love The Rock, so I would love to see Rock. And and I talked about this on previous episodes of the show. Like him, Cody getting a win over The Rock could put him into a whole other tier of megastar sure. level. Yeah. Um, so I would absolutely love love to see it. I don't know. What, what about you, Nick? I don't know, because again, I was very like post 
Sorry, yeah. sorry, Ed, Ed Moxley's bleeding somewhere. He probably is. He probably is. And again, <laughs> I love Moxley. I really, you know, if you listen to this, you know me, you know I love Mox, but it's just like, you know, just all the time. Like, I do, and then it's weird because I was listening to another podcast about it. It's like, it's weird to say, like, I like bleeding and wrestling, but it would, it has to be done right and it has to be done sparingly when it makes an impact. And this 100% made an impact. And I'm like, watching the promo off on Friday. And then going to this, I'm like, well, I want Cody to give the receipt back to The Rock. Like, I want to see that match. And you're bringing in mom. And, like, you know. Mm. He, and it's weird because he always calls his, his mom Michelle Rubio. And he keeps saying Mama Rose. So it's like, feels mm. weird. But it's just like, I don't know. I feel like now I just want to see Cody be the shit out of The Rock. And, like, Roman. Mm. And I, that's the thing. I feel like Roman feels like such an afterthought. Yeah. And I thought at the press conference, like, Seth kind of felt like the afterthought, but now out of the four of them, like like Roman's nowhere. For me. Man, no, that, that, that yeah, it, it's crazy to think of. At least Lisa's chiming in on this. She should it really sounded like the Wayne Simone heritage came out when he talked? Like he had the Simone accent come out, and it just felt scary a little. Yeah, like he's channeling that. Well, I don't know. I never seen Moana, but I know that's like the thing. But whatever, and that's the end of the room promo. It's like oh. Uh, but I have to say you're welcome. And I was like, what is that? And then I was like, oh, what's what his line from Moana? And I was like, oh, that's creepy. For the record, in our household now, Nicole is known as the final boss. Oh, so. yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> actually, it's probably it's probably Bailey. It, it's probably Bailey. No, the final boss. Thing. But anyways, um, <laughs> so again, after this, after smearing the blood, after making the bleed, you're calling out my mother. Like, I'd rather see Cody beat Rock than you know, whatever with Roman, like Roman's been, and I think rock is sh- outshined. And I am honestly, if I was Roman, I would maybe feel better about it. Not being the, them because like rock would blow them out of the water at this point. Yeah. Unless he was like, rock was really going to be going in as a good guy. But honestly, even in the, he's not my favorite person, but in the attitude era, better as a heel. So, so we want to know from all you, would you want to see just if, if that were on the table, it's not. Well, maybe it is. Who knows? They change plans like underwear. <laughs> it seems like lately. So, would you want to see Rock if if the if both matches were on the table? What would you want to see more? We want to hear from you. Let us or know. Or does Cody win at Mania, and that's the SummerSlam match? Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, in if I'm you just, had gun to happen. your head, you had to have one or the other. What would you rather say? No, right now, to date, and I'm including everything from the storyline with Cody versus Roman and. And everything with this, with Rock and Cody from this point on, what would you want to see? And and let us know. I, we should I, eventually. I'm going to get polls up into this into this chat and into onto the show, but and we'll start doing polls. But at times. Um, but moving on, Raw was very action. Raw was so good, and I love when wrestling is good. And I feel like both shows are just in like a sweet spot right now. But Raw was crazy, and then we go to the. Other big huge match. Um for the belt. For the for the other belt, <laughs> the other men's belt. Drew. And then of course they're in Chicago. So Punk's gotta come out and the promo off between Punk, Drew, and Seth. They said it was one of the highest uh, highest rated segment in a while. And this was like I, I don't say Chef's Kiss so much on this, but I'm like, motherfucking Chef's Kiss. To this promo, and I also have notes on this. Let me scroll back up. It the three of them were were fantastic, and mm-hmm. honestly, just just quick thoughts mm-hmm. from me. I I the one who came out the, the best still looks like Drew, and all three of them yeah. I still think oh, it's it it's so Punk's good. hometown. Seth Rollins is constantly over. He cuts great promo after great promo, but the only person on Monday night and the three of them that looked like. That came out looking like gold, even though he got stomped to hell. To me, was was McIntyre. Yeah. So uh, of course, again, we're in Chicago, so CM Punk has to come out. Um, and this incredible open promo. My arm doesn't work, but my mouth does. Ask April, and I'm like, "Ooh, girl, coming <laughs> hot." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love that line. I love his wife, AJ. Oh, I don't know that. Um, and then he talks about how, like, you know, um, Roman was on a Pat McAfee show talking crap. Um, he was like, you know, he was not saying anything. Like, The Rock hasn't said anything because he 
did the other promo. He's like, your arms are too short to box with God. And I'm like, oh, bring it that back. Um, and then that is a great line. That is such a great line. Like, your arms are too short to box with God. I was like, oh, girl. It says Punk is a big fan of pie. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Ed, thank you. <laughs> uh, so then he calls out Drew. Drew comes out. He calls him a troll in a dress. And Drew's like, oh, you can get canceled for that. And then he shows his sh- He has the one shirt, like the savior of Mady on it. It has like the check marks on the back. And they took off the other shirt, which is him trolling at like a grave of C- the CM Punk grave <laughs> thing. And then he was like, using you. Use- you use my name to sell merch. Yeah, I never had to put someone yeah, else's name. name on my shirt. Yeah. To sell merch, which I think he used the line before. In a, was it AEW that he recently used that line? Or is he? I've heard him say that before. And no, I feel like it was an AEW. Was it, was it an, oh, it was at the photo of MJF as a kid. Yeah, I think it was the MJF feud. Yeah, where, where MJF started doing that. And and he basically called out an MJF on it. Yeah. But then Drew came back, and I thought this was such a fun line, too. There's so many lines in this. He was like, you don't do drugs, you don't drink, but you're always in rehab. <laughs> and I was like, ah! Yeah, he, he's been spot on. He's yeah. been spot on. And, like, even going – so on Monday before the show, he went to Mindy's Bakery. Yeah. And, and that was just hysterical because he goes – and, of course – and I don't know if he planned it or not, but – whether he did or not, it was just brilliant because he goes and he's like, of course it's closed and I'm friggin' starving. And he's like, I'll just go get like a muffin or eat healthy or, or you get something else, you know, besides this. So it's just everything he's doing is just, just gold. Right I don't, we did talk about it the other week when he was like uh, working out in Crime Mirror, he played Crime Mirror in the background. So at this point, Drew sits cross legged on the announce desk like CM Punk did when he did the pipe bomb. And then he's like, don't look up my skirt, you perv. Which <laughs> Also amazing. Um, and then he was like, Oh, you know, I'm the chosen one. And Punk's like, By who? Tell me who. <laughs> but he said, uh, What moral something, something. It's like Punk said something back. He's like, Oh, who chose you? And then it, then they, Drew kind of was like, Stirred away from that one and was basically said that Punk should be on commentary for the Seth Drew match. So supposedly the reports that are coming out or that they basically just gave them an old school attitude era type type, just like, here's the nuts and not the nuts and bolts, but basic to framework get, of what Yeah, it wasn't do. scripted. It was basically the bullet points that they had to make and basically get to CM Punk being the announced, being the special guest announced person for the match. <laughs> so then of course, then Seth, uh, comes out and then he's like oh what do you want to see seth do and then he's like oh i should change then they started chanting so he's like oh i'll take the thing of the crowd and every, the crowd starts chanting referee and then seth was like oh what's his counting arm so then seth like flat punk flattens himself on the mat and does a, a count a one two yeah. three and you can see seth was like oh he got me um and he was like well i can't be the referee because i can't be impartial with these two dipshits and then drew who's now sitting in between cole and pat and he's like pg brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah they just kept going back and forth and and it's interesting so now basically the agreement was that punk was now going to be the announcer mm-hmm. what the third announcer yeah for the match so, okay well, I'm just saying how he gets to that. He was like, I'm going to do something that Drew can't do, Seth can't do, Seth's wife can't do. I'm going to finally make you two interesting. And then punk music hits. And then Drew's like, no, nah, no, nah, like you're not in this match. You're not ending the segment with your music. And Drew's like, cut the music. And then. And McIntyre, you mean? No, punk. McIntyre came out and said, you're not in this segment. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did I say punk? Yeah. Well, I he, he, I'm sorry, guys. So he cut off Punk's music. He's like, you're not in this match. You don't get to end this. And then he gets in the... Oh, yeah. Uh, No, yeah. Yeah, McIntyre said that. Yes, correct. Sorry. McIntyre yells at Punk. You're not in this match. Your music doesn't end this. Then he gets into the ring and then eats a super kick and a stomp Seth music. So, begs the question, topic for this week. Will CM Punk get involved physically at WrestleMania 4. He's going to be on the announced team, so he's not the referee, which 
again, he can count, but he can't be impartial. Does CM Punk get physically involved in the world title match at WrestleMania 40? We want to hear from you. What do you all think? Let us know. Me personally, I still feel like there's going to be some sort of angle where after like midway through the match, a ref gets knocked down and all of a sudden Punk just reveals, oh, I magically have a ref, a referee <laughs> shirt on and he, he somehow counts it. Now, I think the question is, though, like, I still think McIntyre is going over. So I just don't know how that would I look. But... Like, I wouldn't, again, like how I originally, what I said with the the Rock and involved in the Cody Roman match, uh, he can get involved and do a thing, but I don't want the thing that he does to immediately go into the pin and then the person wins because Punk got involved. That's fair. Like, again, I really want, just want clean finishes, which I know, hello, wrestling. But if, if it's for the belts I and these people are going on to be champions, like, Drew needs to win clean, Cody needs to win clean. But that's my opinion. I could be wrong. <laughs> um, just going through some of these comments here. Um, but, yeah, again, one way or another, uh, let's see. Lisa, you got the next. One way or another, Punk's going to get physically involved. Low blow or someone maybe gets goes to GTS. And she was armed like fine. I, I still think he's out for a few months, Lise. I don't know. Uh, I, I think I, it's whoever, whether it's Drew or Seth, whoever wins this match, I think Punk will fight them at SummerSlam. I don't think he's gonna be cleared beforehand. And I think that's the other thing, like how physical like he threw himself on the mat to do it one, two, three, but I don't know if he's medically cleared to be taking bumps. Like all for Corey Graves, all this stuff, like he had a lot of concussions and that's why he retired and went to commentary. He was like on the list for a very long time of person. Like you cannot touch him. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he's just like, he can be in the ring and do a thing, but to get physically, I don't know. And I don't know if we will have to watch the sheets to see how. Yeah. I don't think he will. I don't think punk could do, could lift somebody up. Yeah. I don't to do it. I mean, I, yeah, I think more likely, yeah, yeah, maybe like, like, he hits him with some, but uh, yeah, like counting the pin. I, I'd be interesting. He's gonna. I, I feel like the there's something he's gonna. Than him doing that, like I don't know. I'm, there'll be an altercation. He'll be stand. Or at least, or at least they'll stand up next to each or other. Someone get. It's such a simple thing. You will get the wrestler will throw them into a thing, or like Punk is like jaw jacking with Drew, and then like <laughs> Drew will move out of the way, and like Seth hits Punk, or like one of those things, and it's like he gets. Someone hits him inadvertently right. at commentary. So, moving on, those were the two major, at least, world title picture uh, events or of the last week for us, in, at least in our minds. But for me, there's another group. We haven't really talked about them at all, and it's the Judgment Day. And the Judgment Day has been doing a lot. They've been running roughshod on Raw for the last, what, year and change? You know, everyone knows about Ray Ripley and how dominant she's been as the the woman's champion, and probably you could argue the most probably the most dominant female wrestler in the last two years, I two three years. Her and Bianca probably are the top two, and Becky obviously is up there as well. But in terms of winning titles and and matches and things like that, probably the most dominant. But right now, you have them as world tag team champions. You have Damian Priest as Senor Money in the Bank, which he's got to cash it in the next two months. What's June? June? Was it June or July? I think Money in the Bank's June. So what do we? We're in March. So three, four, five. Yeah, like the next three months, he's got to cash in Money in the Bank. They have a six pack challenge to defend the World Tag Team Titles at WrestleMania. Rhea's defending her women's title at WrestleMania 40 against Becky Lynch, which is no surefire win for her versus you know other opponents that may not have as much momentum and and name value for that matter so the last couple of weeks judgment day i mean they've been beating up our truth a lot and the Miz and stuff like that and i get it but it's our truth who's a comedy act let's be honest and the last couple of weeks the foil has been ricochet ricochet has been beating pretty much everyone in judgment day Aside from Damian Priest and, and Finn, but but really he's been beaten up on McDonough and um and Dom, Dirty Dom. So so we're at the point where going into WrestleMania with all the matches that are coming up, I ask the question, has the judgment day peaked? Because 
a six pack challenge at WrestleMania for the world tag team titles. Not the odds aren't in their favor. You have Damian Priest, who's, I know he's still money in the bank winner, but who knows when he's going to cash that in. And I feel like when he does cash that in, it may not be with Judgment Day because you do not necessarily need or want. WWE is always about making single stars, not necessarily factions. So they might want him and probably would want Damian Priest on his own. And now you're seeing the losses between McDonough and Dom. And they're it's they're hinting at maybe kicking McDonough out of the group in some ways because of the yeah you know, his performance. So I'm curious to see is this the end of the Judgment Day? You know, Rhea is a star on her own, doesn't need Judgment Day to to do anything to get anywhere. So you know, is this the end, Nikki? Do you think this is the end? Oh, I feel like we've been teasing this for forever. So I feel like going back almost uh, gonna be a year now. Um, Apparently, backstage WWE was so impressed with Damian Priest carrying Bad Bunny through that street fight in Puerto Rico at Backlash, which would be May because it was the pay per view after Mania. So everyone, that's basically why he got the briefcase. Um, and there was always rumors that, like, yeah, you know, I think that Judgment Day is going to run its course, and then that would be Priest turning face. Like, I don't know what would happen at... With the money in the bank? Yeah, that he would cash in money in the bank as a face, which also doesn't make any sense. I don't mm. know. At this point, like, you're not cashing in on Cody. You're not going to... like. It was I don't like Priest Drew. as a face at all. I don't really... I'm not a really de- big Damien Priest fan to begin with. I don't... I like him better as a heel, but I... I, I I don't know that he's even like, like it's, right it's, now, like main event or You were fun and dominant, and then it's just, I feel like it's, it's, it's run its course. Like, I'm kind of over Priest and them having um, having the, the double belts. Like, I don't know if there's some way we're going to split them up or. Yeah, that's annoying too. That's pretty cool. Whatever. Drew McDonough, Drew, JD McDonough has been in and out and in and out, or is he in, is he not in with them this whole time? And, like, Dom showed up on SmackDown getting back in it with his father and Santos. And, again, like you said, Ray doesn't need them. I don't know. I think it's – I I think they're losing the belts at Mania for sure. I don't think they're coming out of that ladder match with the belts. So let's see. Lisa, sorry, I'm, I'm reading some, Lisa's got another comment. I so, don't see the comment. I know. I, I gotta, I'm driving, listening, doing a lot of things here, so – you know, as your, as your virtual bartender. So Lisa says, gosh, I hope so. I feel like Judgment Day is weighing each competitor down. Reed needs to be on her own. Priest needs to be on his own. Dom may not be ready for this. Dom, honestly, Lisa, I think Dom might be the only one who, who out of the four of them, well, Balor, but who really needs to be on. He gets the most heat, the most reaction at it. Well, you aside from Rhea, keep, but. You keep him with Rhea or now that whatever happened on SmackDown that he's with his dad and San, or he's with Santos against his dad and came out in the mask, like. I think Dom's going to be fine. Everyone hates him. You can keep him with Rhea or not. But, like... It, it'll be interesting. I, I, think I don't can... think Priest, Finn, or JD will have anything if they break up. Well, what's interesting about... Well, just to stay on the Dom thing for a point. You know, on last week on SmackDown, we didn't really talk about this, but, like, he, again, I guess, re, kind of rehashed, which I don't think will ever end, the feud with his father, with Ray, and 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 mess with him again. So, and helped out uh, Santos Escobar. So not that again, and kind of to Lisa, to your point, like if you, you don't feel like he, you're, if you, you were you said that he could be on his own yet. I mean, he could go into that whole legato del fantasma yeah. faction and he that said whole storyline. He's not a part too. of the faction, but they both hate right this year. Though. Right. And like, if judgment day breaks up, you could still funnel him in there. Yeah, I feel like Ray and Dom will be fine. The other ones, I'm really not sure. Well, Finn, is better with a stable, always has been with his career, especially he starting Bullet Club. The, he's the most famous one. The most so, like, maybe, and with Gallows and Anderson doing jack shit and going down to NXT now to, to try and challenge for the That's NXT. also a weird thing. They lost the match to... I have it in my notes. Uh, um, Braun Breaker? Braun no, Breaker? No, no, no. And, well, no, but they, they're doing a tournament in NXT and they won their match. And they're doing a tournament on SmackDown to be in the WrestleMania match. At the Grace and Waller and Theory. So they, walked, oh, yeah, they yeah. lost to Waller and Theory on SmackDown, but then went to NXT and won a match. So it's like. Well, yeah, that's 
I mean, it, well, honestly, it makes then, sense then, because then back down at NXT. Like, remember he he had that whole resurgence for a little bit, then that's why he got. Well, yeah, the NXT idea, and that's why he was doing this thing with Edge and how he got in the judgment game. The idea behind NXT should be the minor leagues to WWE. So, in theory, in baseball, hockey, you have the same idea, right? And and everything correlates. WWE really mimics the professional sports because it's sports entertainment, right? With that idea, so if you send down someone who's on the main roster. It's like sending a starting pitcher, in my opinion, down to AAA. They should be able to be dominant in NXT or at least get a few more wins, right? They have the experience. You're talking a veteran versus a rookie, so you should be able to, to at least get back on track. But, I, I, you know, I think I get why they do. It's we, it's a weird thing, though. Like, once you're – I think you're in purgatory. If, you, if they sent you back down there, unless you're like a – like, Balor's a different story. And something, like, if you're back down there for a long period of time, you're kind of SOL. Um, maybe it's a KOD for your, <laughs> your career in some ways, but moving on. So we like to cover all types of wrestling here and basically the big two are what we, we focus on. So we're going to move into Wednesday and just kind of some blanket takeaways on AEW this week. So as always, ladies first, um, but Nikki, she, I'm sure she's got a laundry list of notes. <laughs> I, um, I literally as a, and just before before Nikki goes on her diatribe about everything AEW, make sure, I know we've got a lot of uh, listeners in right now, so make sure if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, comment below. The phone lines are open. We're going to open those up very shortly. Uh, so feel free to call in. There's a call-in link pinned. In, it's in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually on the link. So if you want to call in and express your opinions, tell us you like what we say, you hate what we say, you want to talk about old school wrestling, new school wrestling, we talk about it all. But anyway, go ahead, Nikki. AEW. I do want to clear up some controversy from last week's show. I'm wearing my <laughs> Copeland shirt because his name is Adam Copeland. Oh, see. But, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, but I digress because we haven't said that yet. But Nick is wearing the head of the table shirt. Yes. You know, for, he, he's the head of the table. but For mom, wishful thinking for later this evening. Boss. Nobody? That might be the alcohol. Yeah. So, <laughs> AEW, I, I saw this match was so crazy. I said that to you maybe like a hundred times when we're watching this. It opened with Shibata Osprey. A TV show, TV, weekly TV opened with this match that would have, was a pay-per-view. The first match was like seven years ago. I was like, if this is still New Japan, this is a pay-per-view match. Like, how is this open? It blew my mind how this was opening Dynamite. But of course, with Shibata and Osprey, Chef's kiss of a match, like the chops, the Germans, he kicked, Shibata kicked out of the, the, um, uh, the, the os cutter at one, and he was just like begging for him to hit mm. him. And then eventually, obviously, Osprey won because he's going into the match with Danielson at Dynasty, which is two weeks after Mania. Can we first say something about how? I always tell Nikki this, and maybe it's insane, but every time I hear his name, I think about bread. Shabbat. Oh, Shabbat. I'm like, bread. get out of here. So, um, it's, it's dinner but time. I'm a little hungry. And I think that's the other, we didn't talk about the collision match a couple weeks ago. That was um, Shabbat and Daniels. It was like two people that were like told they couldn't, they weren't going to wrestle again. And here they are having like a banger of a flipping match. And to see Shibata Osprey like seven years later after their match. And it was just, to me, it was fun. And of course, at the end of the hug, and that leads into the video package of Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson. His name is Adam Copeland. Well, that was a, I mean, that match in, in general was, was a phenomenal. I mean, Osprey cool. is just, and I, and I thought it was weird because like looking back on it, and we're going to talk later about like, we're, we're adding some new segments about match of the week and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and this was a contender, but I feel like, I'm so desensitized because I love Will Ospreay. Every match he has is just a B plus. It's level. It's so good. Every single one. So it's like, even this one, I was like, it's good. And I'm like, is it? And as, as I was telling Nikki this before the show, I was like, I don't, ah, can I make the best match of the week? It probably should be like every week I could probably nominate it. Yeah. Just the Germans. There's so many Germans. I know. Again, a fun match. If you have the time, watch it. Um, then it goes into the Young Bucks do a promo. They're facing Private Party. Um, the last time they faced Private Party, they lost. 
it was the original first tag team tournament to crown the tag team champions. Um, a lot of callbacks to the first match in this match. Um, Started off like a squash. I thought it was going to be a squash. I know. Like it was like that too. Um, but came back. I loved, I believe Nick hit it on Mark, sorry, Nicholas, hit it on Mark Quinn, the Falcon Arrow off the um, barricade. Yeah, barricade. It was yeah. on the a barricade. And then I was like, oh, that, because the steps were right there. And I was like, oh, that looked gnarly. Um, but then, of course, like the referee was distracted. There was a low blow. There's a belt shot. There's all the things. But basically, obviously, they went with the v- EVP trigger. Yeah, they renamed it. Yeah. So, of course, they won. And they had the whole match. They had Okada in the background. Yeah, was just kind of sitting there. Watching. Which, again, I know they're trying to build him up. From the little bit that I've heard of him, he, it seems like he speaks almost perfect English. Let him be the star. Like, I don't know. I just think that, and maybe they're taking their time with him, but well, you see when, with the money investment, you got to, you really have to make I him feel a like star. It's the when and if Kenny gets healthy, and apparently uh, Melter said on The Observer that they think he, he's probably going to need to get surgery done. Yeah. And like, um, obviously, when name redacted, person bounced back from his uh diverticulitis apparently kenny's is more severe um so he might he's probably gonna get parts of his intestines and colon taken out um but we'll see but it feels weird for them to do to be together and like kenny's not with like being the the baby face against that and also to go back and my uh notes i made such a big deal of this at the promo um, it Renee was interviewing the box, and they were like, Renee, you're so great, you just gotta smile more. Mm. And I lost my shit on Nick, and I was like, Oh, I'm so great, like, I how know. dare? And I was like, Oh, well, this, they're just this, smile more. They're like, they're these, these <laughs> weird, shitty, name redacted things people, and I was just like, Oh, he's like, You gotta smile, uh, just like as a woman, and hearing, hearing that at a country when I worked at the country club, I was just like, oh, I, it hit me, and I was like, oh, they're being, like, the worst shit heels. So, like, this is, I'm supposed to have this reaction, and that's what they were, they want. I know, I don't, I don't know, it bores me. Uh, they, their, their EVP act is, is stupid to me, but it is what it is. Um, so, for me, takeaways, again, Osprey, I, the star, I worry with AEW about how much Tony is just making it rain on everybody and that WCW effect. But, you know, again, Osprey, you can see his entrance, just full fledged star. And again, I'm a bigger WWE fan than AEW, but I like them both. WWE missed the boat. He was, you know, he is 110% the next AJ Styles and, and main event talent. And I think even New Japan, I said this before, that New Japan waited too long to make him a main event. Stat, you know, tier wrestler. Like his matches with Ricochet put him on the map. Those years after, he should have been right in contention because once you have that kind of exposure, you really need to be yeah. front and center. I for think the the rumor on the sheets was that like Triple H didn't realize that he can cut a promo. He's like, oh, he's the flippy guy, and then you see him on AEW killing it, bruv. Like mm. he, he's cutting his promos and he just like the crowd is on like every single word he's saying. Like he's so open. he's very energetic and passionate when he when he talks on the mic, which yeah. is he's well, not he like super like creative like, with his words, but he he's he's, he's like, passionate. That I got my over. pugs and I got my cats and I got my missus and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> but like I don't know. Well, I think the other thing for me and it is and you've talked about this. So I got to give. Nikki credit for for a while on the success of what he's done so far. Swerve has just been on a whole of them. I thought he had the charisma and, and was going to be someone who is going to, you know, again, just cut great promos, but I didn't realize how talented he was in the ring. He honestly, and maybe this is, he's almost athletically on the level. Like I of like Kofi Kingston, the way he jumps and in his athleticism, I, I feel like he no, almost not 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 the same. Not he's not jumping like doing you know twenty feet, but but he has a tremendous amount of athleticism that in WWE maybe he didn't get the show, and now and even in his early days in AEW, I feel like he he wasn't being able to and to display that to anybody, and now he's at the point where you're seeing it, and 
he's he's in the main event picture. Yeah. He he's doing great, and like he he's absolutely stood out as you know a main event talent, and and he's taking this opportunity where. To be honest, we talk about the the loaded roster that AEW has and, you know, he's taking his opportunity at the top of the card and and making the most of it. So, you know, good for him. Yeah, I very much like and I think it was in NXT and then like so briefly on main on SmackDown. Um, But him, I like I knew he can wrestle like I knew that. But with him coming to AEW and actually finally getting to have a personality and to talk and you know Prince Nana doing the his That's whole a, thing but I think he comes out like to me he feels like such a star in AEW and then like when Cal's coming out last week and he's like you gotta fight Takesha and he's like whatever I'll fight Takesha then I'm going after Joe and then like him and Takesha had a, a fun match and I'm just like I does he take the bell off Joe already does something need to happen and I was like, is this why I want something dirty in my wrestling? Because it's like, I don't, I think it's too early to take the belt off Joe, but I so want Swerve to get it. I don't know. I think Swerve's a star. I think he he will be the first African-American uh, AEW champion, which I think would be fantastic. I think he definitely deserves that. Um, I don't know. I'm so captivated. Like I wasn't, in, I really don't know what it was. Maybe getting the opportunity, maybe not being so scripted, but like literally an NXT could not care. And then AEW, like, I cannot take my eyes off so, him. I think he's a star. I think he has the ability for sure. And if he has, the like, the right momentum. I'm a big momentum guy. I'm like, mm-hmm. you have to have the right momentum to be champion. And I think anyone anyone with the right momentum can be a champion. Like, Sami Zayn last year could have been a champion with all the momentum he had. He had the Daniel Bryan momentum, right? So, I think you do it. My problem is that storyline-wise... I'm still annoyed that this whole storyline should be centered around the devil storyline, which, or the championship, sorry, excuse me, should be centered around the devil storyline, which is Adam Cole screwed over MJF. Where's MJF? He just went away, right? Like, and now Joe won the belt because Adam Cole essentially screwed over MJF. Like, he didn't hand him the ring, right? So, like, now we're going to, like, keep moving this along. I get it. And maybe that it could be its own match and its own main event match, but totally. the belt it was centered around like he screwed he was screwed over out of the title. I don't like the whole yeah. aspect of just like moving that along because that was what it was all about getting the title. And Adam Cole even said it; his whole purpose was to basically get the title. Now he's trying to send Wardlow to get the title, who failed. But regardless, so dirty. yeah, I, I, the, the uh, whole point. So I have to sort of disagree with you. I think. Oh, please. Poor, poor Warlow. I love Warlow. He deserves more than he's getting. But at this point, like the devil, I don't think the devil review is very great. I think Adam Cole should have jumped off that ramp and screwed everything over. Um, I think also. Um, well, talk about Darby Allen and, jumping and, off things and hurting themselves. That was, yeah. But um, MJ, like, MJF is apparently banged up and something i don't know if it's the show is the shoulder that they're trying to go back and forth if he needs surgery doesn't need surgery they're hoping he's young enough and can just rehab it but there's a apparently a rumor that he that he might need to get the surgery but again it's like adam cole can't wrestle mjf can't wrestle then we need to move away from this and i think um the match between joe um swerve and Adam Page was fantastic. I think the Swerve Page trilogy really put Swerve on the map as well. And honestly, like, if he does take the belt off Joe at Dynasty, like, I'd be okay with that. But I think at this point, like, MJF's hurt, Adam Cole's hurt. Um, I don't, I just like, well, I'm, let's move, let's move on then. Like, then let's get Swerve in and let's move on. Well, we got a bunch of listeners in. What do you all think? Do you want MJF to come back and be in the title picture? Do you want Adam Cole? Do you want that that whole storyline to be part of the picture, or do you want Swerve, Joe, and just move on and maybe Swerve's the next champion and and carries it and we have a, a fighting yeah. champion as Nikki likes to say, or as we all like to say, right? We want to hear from you. Phone lines are open. Feel free to call in. We're going to take some calls pretty soon. We, um, so again, let us know. Moving on. So we have one last segment before we get into the callers here. For this next segment? Or? Yeah, oh. So we, we thought it'd be fun. Yesterday and today was opening day for baseball. So being a Mets fan, 
my season ends always on opening day, probably a couple innings in or nine innings in pretty much. So I get used to hearing three up, three down. So in honor of baseball season, we're doing our own three up, three down for this week. So as always, ladies first. I feel like I... Nikki, who is one of your ups? Blew my load a little early, guys. Um, my first one was Swerve. Again, I think I just said everything I needed to say about Swerve. Um, I think he's a star. I think he can cut a great promo. His matches are great. I watched him in Takeshita. I think... And then it's like, again, him and... I think really put him on the map with him and uh, Hangman. And I, I do. I kind of... I think it's maybe too early to take it off Joe, but again, I would not be mad if they took it off Joe and he just like carried it. Mm-hmm. I will, and that's the thing. I think once you put it on Swerve, I, he needs to mm-hmm. to hold it for a while. Um, but that was my first one, so I was quick on that one. So I just <laughs> blabbered on about him five minutes ago. Okay. So you bye So so mine, I will go with obviously, and we kind of touched on this already. Drew McIntyre. I know he was down. He was put down and, and ended up on the ground on Monday night. But promo after promo, week after week, whether it's social media, in the matches, he just gets over every time. And then he's just looking more and more like gold. So he's my my first thumb up. My second one, we already we just touched him on it with AEW. Will Ospreay, another phenomenal match. He's had two great matches to start. He's had two great promos. He has kicked off his AEW career the way that I think he need to. And if yeah. like that, I would have expected them to do with Okada. So I think he's on a, a completely different, I mean, he's a wrestler on a completely different level, but uh, he is just absolutely killing it. And, and once they eventually get him into the main event picture, I think they're really going to get their money's worth out of Will Ospreay. Who's your number two uh, star up or up? <laughs> I really didn't do mine in order, but um, I'm oh, yeah, going to give a, a shout out to Candice LeRae. Um, you know, I like my women's wrestling. Um, she's turning heel. And, um, I'm into it. it. It was a little weird when she like yelled at um, what's her face about her dead the worm or dead. Your uh, oh my name. gosh, uh, Maxine Dupree. Dupree. Why am I so bad with names all of a sudden? Um, but the match she had with Nye Giles is was apparently cut because the the promo of Drew, Seth, and Punk went too long. But she did pretend she hurt herself, and then she did the roll up and she put her boots on the the rope, and like Indy walked off. And I was like, I really, I think Candice is a fantastic wrestler. And I think she had so much like personality in, in NXT and when they were in the way. And then when she came up to me, it's like nothing. And I was like, now, like, it's a little, it's something to finally sink her teeth into. And I'm liking the heel thing. I'm liking, I would think maybe her indie will have a match or like a blow off, but it's like something, something different. Like from going from no personality and just like, and then like this weird heel turn, like, I rather see it than having her have no personality at all because I know it's there. Well, it gets her more TV time, right? And exactly. she's a talented wrestler that that needs an opportunity. More, more yeah, power. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. And I think I think the eventual heel turn on Indy will happen because, like, Indy walked away that she cheated and has been discussed this whole time. Mm-hmm. But like, personality, get it, Candace. Who is your third? My third. Can I get in the chat? A yes, boy. Pretty deadly. The segment that they had last week, and I'm excited at eight to go upstairs and watch that match. So KO was talking to Aldis, and then Pretty Deadly come in and basically went to KO was like, Oh, what do you know about tag team wrestling? And he's like, Well, I won the, the tag belts last year. And they're like, Oh, living in the past. And KO was like, Oh, I'll challenge you to a tag match and they're like you don't have any friends and he like yells off camera like hey do you want to be tag team partners with me and then randy orton comes in frame and elton prince like throws himself on kit well said i was like ah! <laughs> just like oh my god i could not stop laughing i probably rewatched the segment like a hundred times they're the new uh, not fa- what are they called Fen- no, fandango and breeze what were they called brizango brizango yeah. they're the new brizango hundred percent. Like they do a lot of funny so skits. He was just like, oh my god. And then 
Randy Orton was like, oh, I like your coat. My dad wore that coat in the 80s. And then he was like, oh, you want to be pet, tag partners with me? And I was like, yeah. And then Randy, he's like, oh, we need to play like video games. My boss or whatever walks off. And then uh, K.O. basically like said that he's like, oh, last time I was in this building, I punched two people at once and like walked off. And all this was like, maybe don't stand next to each other. And then K.O. comes and punches them both in the face. And they sold it so wonderful. And they had the other promo a couple weeks ago now when like they had the the rivalry with um, Peter Dune and Tyler Bate that and then like he broke all his fingers and he had like bandages on his fingers and like they had like a cartoon of like uh, Queen Elizabeth come down and like oh Lizzie and it's just like they're so fun and they're so funny that I just I love to see them coming back because I think they debuted and like dipped a little bit and I want them on the opposite. Yeah, well, I, I think because who doesn't love a yes boy. The, the only thing is, is the issue with them is going to be, are they more of a comedy act that's not, that's going to take them a while to get over? But we'll see. But as long as they're so, having those little skits backstage, I'm good. Sorry. So, you know, so my third, just this week, and well, this week kind of continues the momentum. Ricochet had a phenomenal match. He, oh, he's been putting on banger after banger, week after week. He's been feuding with the Judgment Day. He's been getting over. He's coming as the foil, I'm hoping there's been times in the past where Triple H has given him good booking and some momentum. I'm hoping that this is the turn for him. So he's my three ups. That match was phenomenal. Honestly, uh, we'll talk about this later. And I'll probably bleed in. That was my match of the week. Ricochet, JD McDonough to, to a lot of high spots, right? Dom was in it. You got Dom out of, out of the match. I haven't seen a shooting star, shooting star cross body is what it was to finish a match. I thought that was awesome a, yeah. on a standing opponent. And that's why just that alone, you just never see that. And it was two, two great wrestlers, similar size that it takes unique people to, to kind of pull it off at times. So that was why he was my, my third up for this week. So moving on to downs. For me, those were a lot easier to do. I think Nikki and I are probably going to be in agreement on this. I don't know if you made your list, but Roman Reigns, I don't really, I, I know you had a showdown with Cody Rhodes. I still don't know what the hell you're doing other than, like, I know you're battling him, but everyone else is fighting. He, Roman Reigns hasn't thrown a punch, I feel like. It's been Solo. It's been um, Jimmy. It, it's been everybody else. I'm waiting to see Paul Heyman throw a punch before Roman Reigns. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. For his right, it's going to be at his Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Paul Heyman, yeah, is just going to come out and just give a right hand to Cody Rhodes. He's going to have to fight through everybody. But also, I could see Brandy Rhodes coming out and beating the hell out of Paul Heyman. That would be great at WrestleMania. Bitch, who told you it was open night, open mic night? Best Brandy <laughs> Rhodes thing ever. So, so that's my first down. I'm actually, I'll run through my three and then I'll let you go okay. through. Your three on this time. So, number two for me has to be Hook. And that's not because I don't like Hook. It's because I do like Hook because I think Hook is one of the, another one of these, to be honest, I think he's more of a pillar than the four, than some of the four pillars that have been called that. Like, definitely than more than Jungle Boy, for sure. And in terms of getting a reaction, but Hook gets it down for me because. Chris Jericho is going to be his manager. And now Hook's talking more. It's it just the mystique of him being a badass fighter mm -hmm. and, and everything else. Like he, I think having a mouthpiece, a mouthpiece, excuse me, would be good for him, but not Chris Jericho. I'm over Chris Jericho trying to do everything. Chris Jericho should be on the announce team. Just, just be next to, I almost called him Lucha. In my head, I called him Luchasaurus. Um, Excalibur. I don't know why I did that, but just go on the announce team. You're good on the announce team. Maybe do a one-off match every six months or something like that at the stage in your career, like Sting used to. I'm over it. I'm done with it. Hooks getting getting it down for me because now they're just throwing him together, and I feel like they've been doing that recently. Um, you know, they had the best thing he had was Danhausen, and then they they like moved on from him. Like where's Danhausen? Man, good lord, I know, one of my favorites. And then three for me on a down, and it's been on a downturn for a while now. Because I really like the guy carrying cross. 
And like that faction I thought was going to do a lot for him. Haven't seen anything done anything. And he just looks weaker and weaker. And at this point, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping post WrestleMania, he'll get a renewed because, you know, some of these guys go away and you get a little bit more opening of the roster, but I don't know. Nikki, what about you? Well, my first one was AOP. So to piggyback <laughs> off what you said, hey, maybe this faction would be a thing. Like, why haven't we heard more from Paul Ellering? Because he boy can talk. Like, even Scarlet can talk. Like, I don't, this should be so much more than it is. And it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Like, they had a match that last week, but I'm almost like, oh, you have to qualify to do a qualify to do a qualify, but then on Raw, you win your match and you got in. So I don't know SmackDown needs more matches. I don't know, but it's just like, I don't care. I literally don't care. Like, I'm thinking back when they, like, DIY and the Revival FTR, when they had their matches, like, it was, like, amazing. Farmburners, TLC matches, all their other matches was incredible. I could not give a crap about what's happening and that also leads me into my other two because they're all attached like we're going into a second wrestlemania that big bob bobby lashley has nothing and if they do something to uh at this week's smackdown i'm sure it's gonna be like an eight or six man yeah oh yeah tag uh- match from like who cares no one's gonna get anything from winning like Last year, again, RIP, unfortunately, I think Bobby was supposed to do something with Bray Wyatt last year, and obviously that didn't happen. So he won the Andre on SmackDown and then came out on WrestleMania and we did the Andre the Giant pose, and, like, no one cares. I'm like, we're going into another mini match that Bobby Lashley has Jack. And he's super over, and I can't believe I know, they chant for him so hard, and, like, nothing. It's crazy. He's going to a second mini with nothing. But it also leads me into the Street Profits. Super over everyone and like will they won't they were gonna were they gonna break out because like Montez Montez Ford seems to be the star but then like Hawkins lost like a, a crap ton of weight and it was like doing all these crazy moves and like uh Tez and Bianca had that show on Hulu that like oh they're gonna be they're gonna do something with them nothing like they won the match but again they have to win the match to do a match. Well, no, they need to be heels. Like, the the whole idea, with, in my yeah, opinion, with them, with Bobby, was they were going to be heels, and they, they're, they're not they're heels. They're supposed to be a heel faction, but Bobby gets cheered too much. They're not. So everyone's in this weird between, like, the mm. six of them are in this weird between stuff. No one's getting over. No one's doing anything. Like, split them, like, after Mania, split them up, put them on different brands. Like, this is not working for anybody. And, like, Montez is a star. I think Bobby's a star. Like, Hawkins is good. Like, I do like Karen yeah. Cross. I think AOP should be this big monster tag team. And no one's getting anything out of oh, this. Oh, yes. No, no, no one's getting anything out of this feud. Like, um, and um, with, that's going to be our piss break smoke match of Mania if that becomes a, a tag match. What do you all think? Who's your top three? Who's your three up, three down for this week? Or... In general, the last couple of weeks, we want to hear from you all. Phone lines are open. Feel free to call in. We're going to take some callers in another huh? second. Uh, Steven's got a good, good line. Yeah. He's going to teach Hook how to write an NDA. <laughs> Jack, you're good. That, that's pretty much the the only thing at this I, point. That's... I just feel like Chris Jericho hooks himself into what's cool. Like when yeah, he's uh, smart, he's a businessman. When Cassidy he's was cool time. and they had their mimosa match. I don't want Hook anywhere near Chris Jericho. And I literally wrote that in my notes. I was like, Chris wants to be Hook's mentor. Side eye, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he comes out to, um, oh, I would have, uh, not Director's Plans. Dr- no, it's the director's? I don't know. That, that one rap song, it fits him so much. And he does the thing in the, Chris Jericho go. I'm sorry. We got callers. We got comments. No, no, sorry. No, I'm just pinning. I pinned in the chat. Sorry, while when Nikki was, oh, was like, right, I pinned in the chat the call in link. If anyone wants to call in, we got a a new high this week. So we're, we're pretty excited with all our live listeners. So we definitely want to hear from you all. So don't just sit back and listen. You can, but feel free to chime in on the conversation. That's the goal with all these every Friday night at six. So the last question that I give to Nikki before we, we take our, our callers in the evening and, and go to the user portion. Yep. 
I already touched upon it. Nikki, what was oh, your match of the week? Because I agree with you. Like, I really did like the Ricochet JD match. A Shibata Osprey. Again, I was freaking out to you. Like, how is this I'm just um, opening dynamite? Which is crazy. Again, Takeshita Swerve was so good. Like, I don't know if I really necessarily have, like, like last week, I was like, oh, like, Copeland, <laughs> Christian killed it. I don't know if this, I really have a firm, but like, just go watch and enjoy all the things. Again, like, I think we're at such a good point that like wrestling is good and we need to support good wrestling. So watch WWE, AEW, TNA, watch all the things. But I don't, I honestly, I know you want to meet a buffer there, but I really don't have like a match of, I think there's been some like, there's been there's like there's been Raw good matches all week. And AEW or I'm sorry, Dynamite was just good. I want good wrestling. So internet world out there, listener world, did you guys see anything huh? this week that you really liked? I want to hear from you. All right, let's get into it. We've we've gone a, a pretty long time. Got some new listeners again. Phone lines are open. It's pinned in the chat, but uh-huh. <laughs> I think we know who this is. Oh no! But he's coming in as the Easter Bunny. <laughs> But don't don't be a lemon, be a lime. I, I saw a rosebud. Sorry, I was so close to putting that in the in in our slides this week. I was so close. The only that was the only thing I could think about is all the different people that played the bunny, and wasn't Justin Gabriel the bunny at one point in time? Yes. Yeah. So, and they never revealed anyone, or did they? I don't remember ever no. revealing them. But and then there was a couple other people. Like, wasn't was it Alexa Bliss that was? A member of the the so, It was Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Braun Strowman. I feel like there was more. But there was, I know those are the three. Yeah, Braun, I remember because there was that picture not, that was yeah, just like, oh, women's champion, women's champion, women's champion. But what's the what's the Easter Bunny? All right, sorry, sorry. We'll let him in. So, who's the Easter Bunny? <laughs> Is it Steve? Who else? Ah, what are you thinking? What are you drinking? I, I had forgotten about Adam Rose until you just mentioned it. <laughs> he, oh, my gosh. And he was Leo Kruger in NXT, which was a really cool, creepy gimmick that worked for him. He was like, because he's South African. It was this weird, like, South African had a creepy, like, crocodile, like, I'm going to get you. And then, like, they turned him into. It was the leftover stalker gimmick, but done right. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yes. <laughs> so, Steve, what do you, what do you think in this what week? What, what, do you, what do you got for us? That was the most AEW episode of Raw I think there has ever been. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. And, and, and when, when you say that, what do you mean by it? I mean, that, you know, with the the, the, the the blood and the promo, it's like they're they're picking up. Oh, you know, tr- they're picking up tricks uh, that, you know, and AEW should be picking up tricks from their competitor as well. Well, well, what's neat is that, like, I feel like every time WrestleMania season rolls around, it's always like they push the envelope. WWE pushes the envelope with blood or vi- like a little bit more back to the attitude era of wrestling. Like when, like the... And Becky, Rhonda, Charlotte thing when they got arrested and they kicked the, the window out of the cop car. Like, it seems to, like, uptick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, Steve. No, but, um, I mean, I, I still believe that this is a setup with Cody and Rock to, uh, working together. Yeah, I, honestly, the, the whole, the thing to me, and, and, and I said earlier, like the thing that was weird is the whole lean in with, you know, your hands behind your back. And then, and then, and then he whispers sweet nothings into his ear. And you know, Cody was turned on, Ugh. but you get those tingly electrified feelings. But regardless, I'm glad I had dinner already. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously, think about that. Anyway, <laughs> but it would have had so much more impact. If you couldn't read his lip, and he said it loud enough that you could hear it too, yeah. and that's what drove me crazy. Is that like, I, I, if it's if it's supposed to play, and maybe it's supposed to just keep us 
that that seed of doubt just enough. You're like, all right, you, we could hear him. So maybe maybe he's still in the in in the you know for the bloodline because I still feel like there there's some element of this right. Like like we all seem to tend to agree that Rock Roman's going to happen. At some point in time, Rock wants it to happen, so it's going to happen. And the question is, how do we get there? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is like, is is it is it a situation where Rock turns on Roman and does the double agent situation, or is it more of a power struggle because the Rock's such an e- like these two heels are so much of egomaniacs that Roman needs to be the head of the table, and the Rock is the Rock, and he's the final boss, and he can't be viewed as anything other than the greatest and and that's why he turns because rock like in the tag match rock wants the pin like we see that all the time like who wants the pin with these guys and that that changes everything like who wants the credit so. i guess it, it goes back to steven like do you still think after him blooding him and rubbing his blood on the belt that said mama rose and said mama rose look at your boy how how does he say like, oh yeah, well I was I was working for you, like I'm helping you. Yeah, I I think they've been in it together and planning it this whole time. I mean, you know, remember they they're both uh, actors that have been in real shows, so you know they know they know their way around. That's a great point, and you know what is funny is real. Shows. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna <laughs> put this back on Nikki because she can't go to sleep without hearing the TV on. And the other night, she had to put on Ocean's Eleven. And if you remember, I don't know, those of our audience who watched Ocean's Eleven. Which one? The, wait, no, the, the, the new the one. The George Clooney one. I, oh, yeah, the modern the one. Okay. Not the original with um, Sinatra. Not the classic one. Yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, Steven's a film buff. So, sorry about that. So, yeah, the newer, the George Clooney one, because... I, I liked it. the George Clooney one. That's fine. Yeah, it wasn't bad. So, so at the end, if you remember the scene where he has... Is he called like a tiny or something? There's a bodyguard that that the casino, uh, not owner, was it the, the guy who runs the casino, basically hires to beat the crap out of him. And at the end, he's like, "Oh, you hit me too hard." And it's that whole thing where he's just like, "Oh, too soon." And it's like they're waiting for them to come in so that like he comes back into the room and conveniently sees like him getting his ass kicked. So it could be a situation like that. To to your point, where like they're both actors, they both know like, "Listen, like I need to take a beating," and and it's not something that hasn't been done in other storylines. Like people turn all the time, you know, and after getting their asses kicked, I feel like, and just as a swerve. So, But also, also it, you know, related to that scene, let's remember uh, the, the, it was brief, but the framing of the production truck in the background with, with Cena mm-hmm. Austin, I mean, that to me, I don't know how, but that to me was not an accident. Oh, and rain. I mean, they're they're definitely picking up a lot of stuff from from movies and TV. There was that one shot. I forget if it was last week, maybe it was two weeks ago. Uh, Zane was leaving the ring and just followed him backstage, and it was this was like two two and a half minute tracking shot mm-hmm. that just followed followed and and veered off to this conversation between other wrestlers. I think Miz was one of them, and then followed Miz out to the ring, and then in the meantime, there was stuff. Uh, you know, there was stuff that you could see going on in the background showing, you know, the, the, the depth of the camera work. The, 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 the first thing that came to mind when I saw that, I saw it after the fact, was uh, I'm sure we've all seen Goodfellas, uh, the, the, the nine minute tracking shot uh, as they're entering the Copa and going from their car to the table. I'm like, yeah. somebody's been studying up. And yeah, just- I mean, they've been doing great. With with that lately, the, I mean, but the question, I guess, and and that that poses an interesting thought because because a lot of people have theories on this. Like, is because John Cena came out a couple weeks ago and, and in an interview and he said and he's like, I'm free the day of WrestleMania. So so does John Cena show up? You know, do some of the like I don't. Th- I mean, it would be epic. I mean, it's WrestleMania 40. It, it's ep- it would be epic if Stone Cold shows up and and like again, given all. And, and we did our brackets last week, shameless plug on the show for last week, but like we did the brackets last week about like the rock and, and Austin. And that was the foil for each, They were the foil for each other for how many years, how, if, if the rock truly is the final boss and this, this, you know, this high level ranking person that makes the bloodline that much more powerful, how 
awesome would it be if the arguably the most popular, most powerful wrestler of all time, superstar of all time, Stone Cold comes back to try and help, you know? There's a lot of interesting layers of this whole, mm. like, just like, not six degrees, I'm using six degrees of separation as, like, the term, but, like, people that are involved in different layers indirectly of this storyline, like, just looking at the world title picture, like, Seth Rollins now, just off of Raw, right, has CM Punk and Drew McIntyre indirectly involved in the world title, in, in this bloodline feud, right? Like, there's so many different derivatives of, of everybody that's involved. Honestly, in to, to go back to this in a moment, what Stephen said, like, honestly, kids, is cult fiction. There's so many little stories that are, are interconnected and going to turn around and, like, the, the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning and it's all going to be a thing. Stephen, one of our, uh, our commenters, Uncle Eric, once, as a question for a caller, this is interesting. Oh, no. Can you name five wrestlers that made the jump to film in the 80s? In the 80s? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Man, Steve, Steve, we're going to call you Statistician Steve because you know a lot of these good stats that, that you, and you keep us honest. But, yeah, he, I, I know Hogan. I got Hogan. Hogan, Piper, uh, Terry Funk uh, in the 80s. Oh, God. Oh, Bret Hart did some acting. Really? Was it Ventura? Ventura? Uh, was that Ventura. the 80s? Yeah, ben, uh, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> yeah, Bret, <laughs> yeah, I... Bret Hart was on a, a, a Western show for a little while. He wasn't the lead, but he was he was one of the regulars on the show. I can't remember the name of it. It was not a very long-lasting uh, lasting show. Also, King Kong Bundy... Was not, I don't think it was necessarily the 80s, but he was on uh, Mary with Children because they're called the Bundys because of King Kong Bundy. I'm just putting this up, Steve, not to cut you off. Know, we're still going to go through. If anyone wants to call in, because I don't know if it goes to the YouTube channel because we, we stream through a different service. So if anyone still wants to get their calls in, we're putting that to chat. But anyway, Steve, go on. <laughs> so. well, speaking of TV, uh, lowest ratings in three years for AEW. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Sorry, I was gonna pin up your comment earlier for a great show, for another great show, but kind of Nikki's point. Like, I, I don't know. Well, listen, to Jabba, so, I'm not, I don't know much about him, so like to hear, like, yeah, like I even what's his name, like, Nork Suzuki, know like, out. yeah, and like, so like, it, you know, she's like, oh, it should have been on a pay per view, you're giving yeah, this away for free, yeah, I don't. Like to me personally, eh. Like it was, but it was a great match. Like it was a great match, and and I think you like. There's still like AEW is growing, still growing to the point like you've only been on TV a few years, right? Like two, three years. Like what are we at now? Two, three years now. So like they need to have those matches that continuously. Oh, did you see what Will Osprey did? Like the the Osprey Ricochet matches that put them on the map because still regardless. The casual fan is like, oh, did you see what happened? Like, some of them just still don't resonate with, like, oh, this mm -hmm. is AEW versus WWE. Well, that's the thing. When then Punk came back, he made comments and, like, Seth made comments about AEW, and it, it didn't get a pop or a word. Like, the casual people are not watching it. And I think they think Mercedes is going to move needles, and she hasn't. They're going in the opposite direction. But, like, it, it's hard because it's, like... That's not doing great, but then you see like, you know, Swerve doing great, and I was like, oh, I want people to watch this because you're missing the little nuggets that are so good when a lot of the stuff is not. It's um. I I made the comment. I'm sure you saw it that you know, uh, they're almost to the point where they're gonna have more people on the roster than in the stands. Oh, yeah. It's I it's. I mean, it's that it's that WCW problem, though. Like, it, it, it's the same, like, amass all this talent. Like, you have, and this is what drives me crazy, like, again, what are you doing with Malachi Aleister Black? Like, he, to me, in WWE, was a main eventer that got botched. Was on, he was actually rumored, believe it or not, uh, he was rumored to win the Royal Rumble. Um, I think the was it the year Cody like two years ago, two or three years ago when he was, I'm blanking on it. But basically, Paul Heyman came out in an interview and said that uh, the year it was Lesnar, 
there was someone on the it was, it was, it was like three one yes it was like 2021 or 20 yeah it was and basically he was rumored was to win the rumble like, that year and ronda won and becky shit on ronda this week which i love but side note mm-hmm. um, yeah it, it's it's pretty good. So, like, he's another guy that just, like, lost in the shuffle. Like, I mean, like, again. It's like, everyone makes the joke that, like, Tony Khan's Andy from Toy Story is like, I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> and the toys get thrown aside. So, like, I'm hoping, again, like, so, so, so far, so good. We're, like, swerve. And, but, like, Monet can go the same way. Like, she's not moving the needle. Like, Adam Cole's whatever. Wardlow's whatever. Like you have Lance Archer and Jake the Snake that you're doing Jack with. Well, Wardlow, I thought was gonna like. I, I knew, I knew they were so gonna much struggle. Bigger than he sh- is. Powerhouse Hobbs is another big guy that could have like been like used. Like, I mean, Ward, no, Wardlow was on uh, honestly, honestly, Brian Cage. Ricky Starks is gr- a great mm. on the mic. You put him with Big Bill. You have the them win the belts and you take them off and they've done nothing. Yeah, it, it's been it's, it's been a, a, like he's got a lot. It, I, I, yeah, I think the the writing needs to be better for AEW with, with the talent that they have. They could still name between Moxley, Al, uh, Malachi Black, whatever we're called. Moxley, Bryant, Okada, yeah. the Young Bucks, and why are you so and right? and and uh, Osprey like those five like, names alone? Well, those five names alone in your main then, event and picture. And the women's could be like Tony Storm is fucking killing you. Have Thunder Rosa, like you have Diana Peraza, who I love. Like I know Britt Baker's been off TV, like. Even like I really like Julia Hart. I think she's grown grown up. Like I think Willow, like Chris Statlander, like well, you should be so much flipping better than you are. Like look at your talent. Like why are you bad? Like mm. why is stuff not great? But again, you have these little gems that are, you know, Oscar. Asuka. Oh, that's another thing. That's a side note. Um, Osprey Shibata. Like Kingston, oh, like, yeah. you've got yeah. There's so there's so much talent, main event level talent in that whole roster that they they don't use. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure some of our listeners can can, can let us know. Like hey, who, who's someone who's someone in AEW that you that you is Miro. misused? Miro, yeah, Miro, yeah, oh. yeah, Miro. Oh, him and CJ got divorced. Yeah, that that that's it. Well, but you know, like, and where's again. she's gonna go? Listen, let's be honest. Everyone knows. CJ Parker's gonna go where she belongs with Nick Nemeth in oh, in Impact because <laughs> I remember well that was a whole thing that like but again that got, name redacted wanted to get uh, Nick Nemeth and and them together but so it was know, kind of like, stupid, but anyway again like where's Danhausen where's Miro like Kip Sabian I liked like Butcher's barely doing anything he's got the, the a rampage match with Dustin. Like if I if I was Tony's father, because that's whose money this is that Tony yeah. is losing. You know, Tony's father is going to eventually get tired of of losing money and and having to worry about selling <laughs> extra tickets to the Jacksonville Jaguars games. Um, I Dad, would, can I get more for my allowance? I really want to sign another Japanese wrestler. It's supposed to be the next big thing. I would tell to I if I was Tony's father, I would tell Tony stop collecting wrestlers like they're Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> cut. Cut the re- cut the roster by at least half. Hire a booker who knows what they're doing. Uh, maybe Demore. He seems to be available. I don't know who else would be. Demore uh, would be a great. That's actually a great. That would be the best they can. Oh, if Tony can get him in, money, money, money. Yeah. If they, if they, if you know, if they want to reverse it, because I don't, I don't think this is. Uh, unsalvageable. I remember there was a period um, SmackDown was taping on Tuesday to broadcast on Friday. Mm-hmm. And SmackDown, uh, the SmackDown tapings were drawing about as many people as AEW is now to their arenas. And they were in, and they were in full-size arenas too. And that was with, I think, Daniel Bryan as one of the leads. I, I forget how far back this goes. This is maybe at least 10 years um and 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 they weren't really drawing anything and the ratings were i mean they weren't they weren't as bad as as aws but uh you know still not uh great but you know smackdown eventually uh you know pulled themselves out of the muck first i think you know by 
you know, getting them getting themselves out of the out of the tape situation in the middle of the week. Uh, I mean, so it's not impossible for a for uh, AEW to reverse uh, the flow. Well, the thing is, like, and and it's nothing wrong. Like, and they're not on that like that micro a level. There's nothing wrong with what Impact does, like, or or NXT for that matter. You know, if you fill up a smaller arena, it still looks better. I think we lost Steve. Um, but, but Steve, we definitely, we definitely hear you on that. Like if you, if you lose, if you feel, sorry, excuse me, if you fill up a small arena, it, it's still filled with loud it's, it's chanting the, fans that it's get gotta people. It's got to be the vibe. Like you can be in with 50 people, 500 people, 5,000 people, but the people that are there need to be in and need to be chanting. Because there's so many times you watch a show and people are quiet and it's weird. Again, we went through the whole flipping pandemic era when you didn't hear anything and it was weird like you have to go to shows you have to be loud you have to yeah. participate you have to do a thing yeah it, it's funny because uh oh sorry oh i'm on a new stool this tonight so we're trying to get a little higher level no, up we're very so much I much like, this like i normally am so anyway but um yeah like i i think there's there's a lot there's something to be said about like getting a reaction whether it's in a small like even in the small, like how many times do I'm sure us or listeners like go to indie shows and it's and like an empty gym crowd. with 20 people. Yeah. But like how much better would it be if you just did a, a little bit smaller, a gym, like something like that? Like there's nothing wrong with that. You can film. We were watching. So you know, spoiler alert, because we have a lot of listeners in right now. Again, on Wednesday, we have four ECW heavyweight champion, PJ Polacco, formerly known as Justin Credible. So it's actually Wednesday. I'm going to move the call in link for a second. It's Wednesday. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, your normal happy hour hour, 6 o'clock Eastern time, if you're not on Eastern time, for all of our we'll fans overseas to, and we'll all across the United States. We'll be talking to about all things ECW, like Polly going into the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania is in um, Philly this year. Like, I think we're, it's, it's, I'm like, oh my God, we're interviewing somebody, but it's going to be, be fine. So, uh, anyway, so the segue that I was, uh, was well, using this promo for, no, no, it worked out perfectly. So is that, you know, one of the other shows that we were watching is is actually, and we were talking about, you know, crazy bumps with the Falcon Arrow, you mentioned it, and it really brought this back to me. So ECW did a show in the Cobb County, I guess it was like a prison. Um, and yeah, and they they made reference to the big boss man there and all that stuff. And who's the man? And PJ does a, a crazy. It scared the daylight out of me because he does a crazy bump on a superplex through a table that he's battling Mikey Whipwreck in this match. And basically, so you know, go back. I can't remember what pay per view it is off, off the top of my head, but again, similar similar situation of just like, oh my gosh, it's such a dangerous bump. But point being, back to my original point, like going into small arenas, ECW absolutely like made made it work everywhere they went they made money off of that like paul Heyman was brilliant at packing those arenas yeah and you don't need like you don't need to go it's great to fill up these arenas and do wembley and all that stuff and bring back the nostalgia and and that's great if you want to do that once a year and you can book it out because it's it's overseas and you're only going to england once Absolutely, but, but it just is terrible when you see like Ed, you know Edge and I'm, I'm saying Edge and Christian. I keep saying it. I'm saying it every week. It's Edge. I don't want to. I don't care about this Coke garbage. Regardless, finish your point. But but him like you know having these great matches and like Okada's debut and Osprey's debut in front of these like smaller crowds doesn't do him. And, and it's not because the crowd's well. It's just as long as you have enough energy and you put them in front of a good group, it's going to just ignite the passion of the whole fan base and the fan base more importantly that's watching on tv like you can't do like i feel like like you're doing this big basketball arena like milwaukee like you go into it like when we saw aew and ac i'm like that was like the perfect Mm -hmm. arena we had a flipping blast like the maybe do your smaller thing and i think that's why the ecw arena worked so hard like this is our home this is our little crowd and we have our people yeah there so don't think you're gonna sell out of like the football stadium 
do your little, do your, do what works. Like, I don't know. And I think they booked so many big things out because they thought Punk was going to draw all these things. I'm thinking, I'm hoping the latter part of 2024, they'll go back to the tiny. Because I would love, like, we had a blast. I would love to go see them in AC again. Yeah, that was a perfect perfect venue for them. And and honestly, it was, you know, for us, so we're, we're broadcasting out of New Jersey, but for us, Atlantic City is about two hours and change, two and a half hours from our house. But the area, like, where they did it, it was Boardwalk Hall, which is right on the boardwalk. There's a number of hotels along the boardwalk. So if you're out of town, you can come visit. Like, it was an intimate perfect. setting. It was a perfect environment to, to watch. So same thing with, like, any show. Like, I feel like you know, me, Nikki and I go to a lot of shows, whether it's comedy or, or you know, music or whatever. And that in, more intimate setting it just makes for a better environment a lot of ways. And, I, and I, I don't know if I, anyone who is the used fans, like I saw them at PNC and then I saw them at PNC Big Art Center for New Jersey people and also saw them at Starlin Ballroom, which is a, a small, a, God, probably a, a tenth of the size. I saw them in this little intimate setting and it was so good sometimes in wrestling needs to be intimate and something needs to be smaller sometimes it needs to be big exactly but it, like i don't i don't and that's a hard because everyone's like ah look at the hard cam there's nobody there but that doesn't take away from what's happening in the ring like cope and christian put on a good match like swerve is doing good like osprey okada is doing good or well also the hard cam Oka. seats are the most expensive seats let's be honest so like like <laughs> So, the, the average fan like you or me are not sitting there you know i don't want to say this because you're not drawing the venues that you booked out seven eight twelve months in advance shouldn't ref- i don't know reflect on what your actual product is because like Chibata osprey was great to swerve was great that we didn't talk about Tony Storm, but I love Tony Storm. Like, oh yeah, just because mm. they're not drawing in house doesn't take away how actually good the product is and should be. Steven's having an internet problem, but I'd much rather see a show in ECW Arena or Manhattan Center Pack with represents than a, than Prudential Center the third full. I agree, one hundred percent. Like that, it's just it so much better. And and again, it just it just makes it like the cameras pick it up because. The, the I'm sorry, the cameras pick it up, the mics pick it up. It's just so much overall better. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as we as we again, as we have some listeners in here, I'm gonna pin it up to the chat for a few more minutes. We're going a little bit longer than we normally go, but it, we're having a blast. It's a Friday night. Hey, we're only 28 minutes out of SmackDown. So Tell us what you're drinking, what you're thinking, yeah, and I'm gonna call, write a post comment, it up. Thing. So if anyone wants to call in, we're gonna open the phone lines for another couple of minutes. Steven, thank you, as always. Steve, always appreciate the stats and and the fact-checking, to be honest. And, well, really good good topics and conversation. Thank you, Steve. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, what's... Give it a thumbs up. Um, But, yeah, what's everyone else thinking? Like, you know, we're going into SmackDown. This is... This is my favorite time of the year because the weather gets warm. In the Northeast, the weather gets warm. We've dealt with, it's been more mild, but we've dealt with winter and snow and all that garbage and coldness, and I hate the cold. And now it warms up, and if you can't hear Jackson in the background, that's our dog snoring snoring away. away. It's not a person. It's an actual dog that apparently we're not interesting enough for our dog, but it's tough to keep his attention. Anyway regardless but this is the greatest time of year because all the booking everyone comes back for that wrestlemania payday that situation and like how many instances in the same like just think about everything we've seen all the stars we've seen the last week we've seen the rock we've seen yeah he's not competing but cm punk Uh, we've seen seth rollins cody rhodes roman reigns just since we did the last show I want to count. Well, I want to count Paul Heyman because he's in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, exactly. we, um, we didn't even touch really on the on AEW. Shit. You've had o- Okada show up, right? He's been around. You've had Will Osprey matches. Osprey. 
there there this is such a great time the wrestlemania season is such a great season to be a fan um so i absolutely just love it and this is just it's christmas season for us as wrestling fans right let's all enjoy it and make the most of it so i'm putting the call up if anyone else wants to call last call for the calls yeah that sounds pretty good last call for our call so finish your wish. let us know if you want to write in let us know what you're thinking what you're drinking but we'll be here Wednesday. We'll be here next Friday. Actually, thank you. Sorry. I'm like, share, answer. subscribe. Flippin', flippin', flippin'. PJ, incredible PJ is going to be, we're talking to him. I don't know, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. Wednesday, again, 6 p.m. Eastern time, whatever that is locally for you. If you can't make it live, we'll miss you. But you can send in your questions. If you can't read that, the email is Nick Club, just like Nick Club Wrestling Happy Hour. So think about it like this Nick Club, W H H, at Gmail. So send in your questions. This is the first of what we hope is a line of interviews that we're going to have over the course of our, of our podcast. We're not sure if we're going to do them standalone or incorporate them on our Friday night shows, but this one will be the first standalone. We got them for the full hour. So feel free to. Write in, call in. Here's the kicker. You got to be a subscriber to ask a question. So you got to let us know. I'm a subscriber, blah, blah, blah. Nicole Teodoro. And here's my question for PJ. I'm going to submit all my questions to our email address. Just be, I'm a, I'm a official. And I'm going to conveniently move them all to spam. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um... But anyway, so we're excited. That's the first of our, we're doing a special WrestleMania weekend edition because there's just so much wrestling going on. So we're starting on Wednesday with PJ, Mm -hmm. AKA just incredible. We're going to talk about everything and more importantly, his career, but Hey, we're in Philadelphia. Who better than a former ECW champion to talk about? everything ECW, Paul Heyman going into the Hall of Fame. We're really excited about that. Then we kick it back Friday with our normal 6 p.m. happy hour show. Predictions for, I'm assuming, hopefully the the card will be released for Saturday. We'll have a better idea. But we're going to try and do some of our predictions for Saturday's night's uh, main event, which at least will be the Rocks tag team match. So we'll at least have one that one match that we know of um, for WrestleMania. Then we come back. Sunday after night one of WrestleMania, recapping everything, what we've all seen. We want to hear from all of you. So get ready for that. Sunday, we haven't lined up a, a time for that. That'll probably be more early afternoon before everything gets crazy again for Sunday night. And then we're probably going back live again Monday night, right before Raw after WrestleMania, which we all know is absolutely, as Nikki likes to say, bananas. Bananas. So... We're excited. It's a fun time to be a fan. That being said, doesn't look like we have any more callers for the evening or comments. So, looking forward, we are, what are we at? it's 7.38 Eastern time right now, which brings us to 22, yeah, 22 minutes before SmackDown well. is about to air live. So, looking ahead, just a couple things, a couple bullet notes on what we got for SmackDown. Me personally, I'm excited. Jake Cargill's first appearance as officially oh, yeah. signed. There's so many things. Yeah, that so contract. Jay's, that's going to set up the six man women's match. Six, um, six woman tag match. For for me, so Jade will be there. Mm-hmm. We have a yeah, and then actually, that's probably Bianca versus Dakota Kai is actually scheduled yeah, for the so evening. Yeah, so that's good again. Six woman tag. So very exciting for the evening. I'm excited because Jade Cargill, I'm a big Jade Cargill fan, and I really think that she's going to do a lot of great things in WWE. So pretty pretty pumped for SmackDown. So let us know. Until next time, we will see you on Wednesday. So again, Wednesday. different time, weekday time. DJ. Wednesday, and two hours club. before your local AEW Dynamite. Figure it that way. So we're going to bleed our right in. PJ interview into Dynamite. So, as always, this has been a pleasure. 
Again, if you're new here, to all our new listeners, make sure before you leave, you hit the subscribe button. If you'd like, leave a comment below if you agree with what we say. Don't agree. We like to hear all the stuff. Um, but until next time, you don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. Bye.